Hello everyone, welcome to an adventurous episode of ARG Presents. I am Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who, much like myself, may be adventurous but has horrible vision, the Brent. Hey, how's it going? I was trying to produce a screen there. Oh, I see. Well, <laughs> I don't know what that meant. What do you mean? Explain. Well, you know, like uh, our system today, how it produces its screen. That's true. <laughs> Every system produces a screen. No, not by spinning. Oh, I see what you're saying. Wow. Very deep. Very technological. So, by that very interesting opening, you understand that this week we spent a week we made the deal and we'll be playing the Intex Adventure Vision. Yes. Now, Brent, you had no idea what the Intex Adventure Vision is. I had no vision. idea this even existed. That is correct. Now, so you've never seen one? You've never Absolutely one. not. <clears throat> You probably wish you'd touch one now. So, the the Intex Adventure Vision, I've actually, is, is from my era, way back in the day. Let's learn a little bit about it while we're here. And the, the thing about the Adventure Vision is, this thing was pretty rare, even back when it was released. I've seen one. I saw one. I've never played one. In fact, Boat is the only person I know that's actually seen and played one of these things. Uh, an unusual little console. Absolutely. Sure, uh, I guess some remedial uh, similarities to the Vectrix uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in terms of it's an all-encased... Only in you know, concept. That's right. <laughs> so, let's, 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 that's dig, where it let's is. dig into the uh, Intex Adventure Vision. Now, this thing came out way back in 1982. So, well, that right there is pretty impressive. you got to put, put yourself into context of the early 80s here. Sure. And uh, this thing was, again, the... Uh, Adventure Vision was manufactured by uh, Intex Industries. Yep. Uh, you want to take a guess how many of these were produced? Produ I know how many were sold. I saw that. Yeah, I, this is a total systems that they put out. And, and, and I will say it's a, it's a wide gap as we try to guess here. Well, no. I know, The official number I've seen was 50,000. Right. So general consensus is between 50 and 100,000 were produced. Now... Uh, it's got to be closer to 50. <clears throat> uh, the uh, units sold is allegedly 50,750 from the two or three sources I could find. 50,750 <laughs> units. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, here's a funny thing. Uh, the Intex only had uh, four officially released games. All right? Yes, four. Now, that's here's correct. The, here's the wacky thing. <clears throat> uh, unlike some of these other systems, I, I'm trying to, we covered a system a while back where they made... Double the amount. It was like ET is a good example. They made double the amount of cartridges that exist as consoles exist on the earth. Yeah, you know. Well, Intex is like, nah, not gonna have that problem. No, they're certainly, uh, unless it's the Fender. Reportedly, they only made a thousand copies of each game. Uh, I find that hard. And that's to believe. that's that's what that's what the it's uh, what the uh, the general consensus is, and each of these games were four. K game. Yes. <clears throat> and when you when we get into them, you understand why. Um, now, for those of you that have not seen the Adventure Vision, it is a all encased unit that has a screen and controllers all built in. Yeah, it looks like uh, the old arcade game setups, like in the Donkey Kongs. It does. It's only you know, a little larger, but yeah. yeah. And it's it's got you've got your stick in there. You got a stick, and then you, on each side you've got buttons. So they've they've. Uh, uh, accommodated for lefties and righties. I saw some people. I watched some videos on this, and people could not figure out why they had all these extra buttons. It's like uh, I, I believe I watched the same video while researching this, and it, it's it's hard to believe that these people review arcade stuff and don't understand why their buttons on both <laughs> well, sides. There you go. I'm sure people say the same thing about us when they say dumb, dumb stuff. So you've got again, you've got uh, one joystick and four buttons. That in itself is sort of a novelty, even consider when it came out because. That's a lot of buttons, isn't it? That's eight oh, yeah. buttons right there on the on the uh, thing. So, you know, as we mentioned, this is an all encompassing, all encased <clears throat> unit. And so, what you've got is uh, uh, a screen attached to the back. It's like I said, sort of like the Coleco, uh, you know, little arcade machines we talked yes. about. But this one, instead of having a, uh, you know, like a, a, a Vectrix machine, a vector machine, graphics uh, monitor, this one had. Uh, Single line, a, it uses single vertical lines of 40 red LEDs combined, and this is when Brent's gimmick comes into play, with a spinning mirror inside the casing. So what you get out of this uh, wacky uh, um, setup is a, a screen 
with a resolution of 150 by 40 pixels. Yes. All right. So what else used this same sort of gimmick? Another brilliant success in the console world, the Virtual Boy, had a similar setup. It's true. Well, it, no, it, no, no. It, it, well, I mean, I no, understand. No, it's exactly. It, it, it's exactly. Sort of, yeah. Um, it had two screens and, and the uh, the uh, different spinning. The effect is a, a, a what you see on the screen is sort of a a picture that is made up of tiny sort of like rectangles. I mean, if, I guess I mean it, it, the way it looks. Well, okay. You here's what it. you have: it's a point of light, right? right? But then it, the spinning is a vertical spinning, so it stretches that point That's of right. light to be wider than it is tall. That's exactly what. So you get. the the pixels in this are elongated. And so when you when you uh, when you see one of these, now of course we uh, we don't own Adventure Visions. I wish we Absolutely did. Absolutely not. And stupidly, like I always do, I, was, I hopped online when this came up. I was like, well, let's see what I can get with these. for new. New. We'll get to that in a moment. But so we had to emulate them, and and, and much like a Vectrix. Emulations is probably not going to do this thing uh, justice in terms of what the actual gameplay Absolutely would not. be like when you play it. Now, you can play the games. Uh, I, I did watch videos of people that kind of zoomed in to show you what the effect was. And it's funny not because, uh, well, <laughs> some of the videos I watched, I watched about five or six people start showing these off. And it was tough to, it's tough to film, isn't it? You know, you have to get in there. Well, you have to have a very dark room because you you can't have your outside lights be brighter than your red LEDs, which are bouncing off a mirror. So the darker the room, the better. And people don't like filming in dark rooms. So unless someone was really dedicated on filming the screen in a dark room, you got a really washed out version of what you saw. And plus, you, I saw a couple of people where the screen would sort of uh, a pulsate. You know, there were there were issues. These things are getting old, and these are getting real old, and they're and they're such wacky. Uh, setups that it's going to be hard to maintain one of these things. I, I'd be scared to death if I own one that it would not work. I which saw is the sort of way I am with the well. Vectrex. I saw inside one of these things. Did you see inside of one? Of I these did things? not. No, I saw inside one of these things. Uh, it is the the forty LED strip on the side is just glued into the corner uh, onto the left hand side of the. Screen. Oh yeah. Uh, the spinning mirror takes up the entire rest of the inside of the unit. Uh, and it's when it spins, it spins, it goes straight to ludicrous speed. Right. It is tr just trippy watching this thing spin as fast as it does because they had it turned on with the, to where you could see the mirror spin. I'm talking tons of resolutions per minute, uh, which is one of the reasons why the battery life on this thing was crap. It took what six C cell batteries. It would took and it goes through them, fast. and it just eats them yeah. because the thing is just spinning constantly. Yeah, uh, and mirror the mirrors in it are fairly thick, I guess, to make them a little more robust, which means the motor has to spin that much harder. But yeah, the entire inside of this thing is a forty strip of LED lights and a spinning mirror that has a front and back. That's it. That's the entire inside of it. So. <laughs> Just to touch on, of course, we made this uh, was released and, and uh, produced by an outfit called Intex. I'd never heard of Intex. Uh, I, I had not I, It turns out that I'd actually heard of some of the stuff that they did. So <clears throat> they were a Californian company uh, that was founded in 1970 by a few guys, and uh, they they their initial stuff was making toys, you know, and stuff like that, and 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 like sort of like. Uh, uh, those games you used to play where you had like sort of like you can construct stuff, not Legos, but more like you know with like little bolts and stuff. Right. You know what I'm talking about Re like a erector sets and right. stuff like that. Then in the '80s they became they got into the electronic game industry. All right, so um, they all, they had a game called the uh, Selecta Game. Now I had this I'd heard of, believe yes. it or not, the Selecta Game. Uh, and this <laughs> this is sort of it's kind of like the adventure vision in a I mean you could see how they the one was sort of influenced into when you know the, the adventure vision was influenced by the select again they sort of got their feet wet on that one absolutely uh, and 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 took off with it which I thought that was kind of cool uh, Intex was around until 84 and the video game crash in the United States dropped them yeah uh, plus that was their it. their game probably didn't do them any favors let's face facts on that but they they did they did some uh, uh they did some handheld consoles 
Uh, put them on the list for the next time we do another one of those, all right? Um, so get this. The Intex name is based on the initials of the founders. N for Nicholas, T for Tony, uh, and when and and um, an X to make it pretty, according to <laughs> yeah. So you got N T X, N T X. That's where they got the name. I think that's kind of cool. Um, so the uh, process in this thing, and, and Brent's I, the one thing that's commonly known is the fact that the motor in this thing that spins that mirror is it's a, it's insano. Uh, we use it's funny. We, I would wager that the motor, and it's very similar to one we use in in some of our uh, machines uh, where I work. And what they what you're getting basically is, an, is a is a tape deck, sort of like a tape deck motor. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, it's just a spinning motor that they spin up the speed they spin yeah. and spin and they go to high speed for a long period of time. Yeah. And uh, these motors, if they're anything like the ones we were using, you can't get them anymore. <laughs> they're difficult to get, and they and you have to spin them at a certain at a certain rate. Uh, these things had a uh, Intel 8048 processor running at 633 kilohertz. Do you know that? Which is basically just a math processor. Right. Well, it's uh, you. Whoever came up with it, you got to give them credit for uh, for figuring out this wacky design. Oh I mean, yeah. This, this is one of the wackier things we've come by. As we mentioned, this uh, this machine only only ended up having four games released for it, and we're going to cover them all. Uh, but the actual console itself had a little gimmick on top. I don't know if you noticed this, Brent, where you actually could stick the cartridges. Yes. <laughs> you, could, you, know, you know, which is, that's kind of wacky. Um, I noticed that the... Uh, we should go ahead and just mention the price of these things, okay? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I saw these on eBay going for $1,300 and higher. Yes. I saw a fellow that was trying to get $3,000. I saw a fellow who was charging $120 for the battery panel. Yeah. Replacement battery panels, not even original. All right. So these are super duper rare. Now, did you see the Ultimate Collection? The Ultimate Collection? Oh, yeah. what? There's a guy that has a basically new old stock. Okay. <clears throat> Fresh, brand new box, plus all the games. Uh, they were found in a warehouse, and they've been being sold over the last, like, uh, four or five years. Yeah. Uh, had picture of everything pristine. Yeah. I mean, there were a few little nicks on the box that were probably in from shipping. Uh, buy it now price fifty five hundred dollars. Yeah. That, but if you wanted to show, uh, so that gets you the the adventure region and the games, all the games, all the boxes, all the documentations. Plus, he's throwing in the shipping box that these would come to the store in. That's something. I mean, yeah. If if you were a collector, this is the one you buy. It, it was in incredible condition. <clears throat> well, I would love to have that, but unfortunately, <laughs> there you go. I would also like to have a car. So if you had to choose, <laughs> now I read a lot of people mentioning that it finally at some point in the uh, uh, in the in the two thousands, someone actually did a demo on this thing. Uh, which I did not see. Did you actually see? Did you, I'm I sure did. You, I'm what? sure you read this. Did you? Well, it was March 31st, 2013. Uh, the first ever homebrew slash demo ROM for the system was demonstrated by Mega Museum of Electronic Games. Uh, I didn't see it. I'd like to. Uh, what it was? Oh, you watched uh, it. I did see it. Okay. It is actually a collection of ten demos, uh, factioned by several different people, and it was. Literally just demos. Uh, they had spinning cubes. They had uh, real smooth animation um, of of some, of a chick. Uh, they had really. So, oh yeah, they had some uh, uh, math computations and stuff going on. It was actually pretty impressive, and it lets you. It, it kind of goes as far as to show you. Uh, this thing couldn't do a lot. I mean, what they did was mega impressive. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, these guys really pushed it to the limit. And it was still meh because of the technology that was running it. I like the, I like the guts it takes to even, to even just release a, a, a demo. For this. I mean, but, I mean, you instantly get notoriety. Basically. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. A, I, I, I really was hoping that they were going to put together a game afterwards. Uh, but they didn't do it. It is all just uh, plug it in and watch it yeah. sort of affair. Um, so, 
As we mentioned, there are only four games for the uh, Intex Adventure Vision. Absolutely. And, I mean, and, and unless there's some homebrew coming, there may never be any more than four. Probably, yeah. And Probably I can't, four I could, plus this demo cart. And I couldn't find any uh, evidence, and I looked, this, that they had anything in the dock, like they, anything on deck. Like I, I did see they had two games that were rumored to come out. Oh, yeah? Um, for the life of me now, I cannot recall what they were. Uh, but... They were super rumored, just like uh, salespeople talking about them. So that, Probably just that's as, what I yeah. There was no actually I couldn't tell anybody had done any work on any sort of games. So, no, I don't believe they had them. So we figured, when are we going to be around this way again? Let's Never. just tackle all yeah. these suckers. So we just split the games up, and uh, we are going to talk about them all. Yes, because uh, they weren't they were easy to you know easy to play. Uh, this thing is emulated. Again, I, the emulation for this, much like the Vectrix, you can't really fully understand the the, uh, the way this would look in real life with, in, from the emulation, but it does give you a, a, a good way to play it. Unlike the Vectrix, where you lose something when you see it in emulation, uh, this emulation, you actually gain clarity. Uh, because the screen on this thing, if you're playing it in real life from the videos I saw, is so wavy and jerky because like I said it's just spitting mirrors that some people will get motion sickness will get headaches from looking at the screen which is probably one of the reasons why this did not succeed the other reason is it did come out about the same time as the Vectrix which was awesome uh, yeah. and this thing was not and even the price difference when these came out the Vectrix was like $200 and I think this was $70 yeah. um, but the price difference did not match the quality difference, which uh, was actually kind of unfortunate. You know, I love the concept of the all-encompassing, like, you know, it's, I mean, this was the switch of its era, effectively. It's a game yes. that had the screen, but uh, I just didn't have the jack. Also, this, the other thing is, this was marketed horribly. Uh, on the box itself, it keeps mentioning how awesome the screen is, and of course, when you when you play it, it's garbage because there is no screen it's just lights emulating pixels uh that was a that was a huge marketing faux pas in my opinion well you gotta you can't say okay the screen stinks <clears throat> no so go buy it no you own it you own it uh and you you hype the game changing capabilities because cartridges for a little portable unit like this were you know this was one of the few at the time yeah so you that's what you should have that's what they should have done i, I think marketing it the way they did with the, like we have a, a a like real tv uh in the unit that was bad because once people played it they were disappointed yeah it, it was tough and I, I was you know uh, uh competing with the vectrix oh yeah the vectrix it just blows it away and i will say this i mean i i'm convinced brand and you may get screened if you if someone manufactured vectrices right now and put them in stores, you'd sell them by the bushel. They're unique. Nothing still. There's nothing like them. If you and there's I, nothing like this either. But if you <laughs> used if you had the the ultra bright vectrix graphics yeah. with good quality overlays, I agree. I think you would yeah. sell. I, I, you're not going to sell millions, but you could probably make a run of 25,000 and sell them. I would say, yeah, I agree with that. And I, plus the homebrew for, this, for the Evectrix has been off the charts as yeah. opposed to the Adventure Vision, which has no homebrew. Yeah. So we didn't really pick a particular order. I just sort of loaded them up. So Brent, why don't we go ahead and start with uh, one of my games All right. uh, that I picked out. And so I went ahead and had a look at Super Cobra. Now you Super know, Cobra. You know I am a big fan. You of, are a of big Super fan Cobra. of Super Cobra. And yeah. actually, I chose this for you, Bizarro Man. Although the Bizarro picks didn't really make much of a difference since we played everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. But I, I love Super Cobra. So Super Cobra is a game where you play a a, a helicopter that flies across this like. Uh, what would you call whatever that is like a, a built like a city or or, or something a, a landscape really yeah, yeah yeah I guess I guess that's the way to go and 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 bombs and shoots its way across it now uh, this was a Konami game that came out uh, way back in uh, 81 and it's been released in a bunch of stuff now this was sort of like if you ever played scramble they're very similar games scramble you yes. play a, a rocket flying sideways Always, I mean, just the, it's a traditional it, rocket. It like, is. I always wondered about that. It must be going to, and I 
and High Cliff. In Super Cobra, you play a, a, a helicopter, but both games you go across like a, a play field dropping bombs on stuff and, uh, and shooting stuff in the, in the air. Great game. And Super Cobra released a ton of systems. You had to, everyone had it. Yeah. 2600, 5200, uh, all the Atari computers, Click Vision, Television, MSX. Uh, and, you know, everyone had it. And the Coco even had, like, a, a rip-off version. And it also, I believe this was one of the ones that appeared Whirly on the... Whirly Bird. Didn't we also get this on the on the, uh, on the the uh, official version on the Odyssey 2? Got a super cool I believe run. you are correct on so that. So, this game got that got around. And uh, Intex was like, you gotta have some of that sweet Konami action. You know? And they got official license. Yeah. Uh, and so... Uh, you got the license game. These are all, uh, well, three of the four of these are officially licensed. Correct. Um, so, this was, a, like I said, it's a big game, and it sold uh, 12,000 plus arcade cabinets in the U.S. in four months. And it was one of Stern's all time best selling uh, production games back in the day. So, it's a natural to bring this to the, to the uh, adventures, and it really is a natural. I mean, it really, it is. It, it is, yeah. Uh, to, now, this is the one I had, couldn't emulate with the. Uh, I, I will say for uh, reference, if you want to try these things, I emulated them on uh, archive.org. Uh, I yes. played them, and they, and they just used. They emulated uh, mess. Uh, there's no problem there. Yes. But this one, for whatever reason, it wouldn't start right, so I had to go and get the old Xbox out. And, just so you know, it worked fine for me, so yeah, it might work fine you for you as well. So. Uh, how to explain what this is on the adventure vision? It is sort of like Super Cobra. This is probably the I would say visually, this is probably the best game uh, uh, on the adventure vision, in my opinion. It looks like the arcade, and the and they use the LEDs basically to, of course, they use them or the uh, they use the the lights to to render the area that the the air, hel helicopter flies through and flies over, and then they also use it to, fly, to render the helicopter, and they do it. It works out pretty well the way they've got it structured, at least emulated wise. Again, having played this emulator, you get you get it, you get it. It looks good. You can tell what you're doing. Uh, the, the the controls on the uh, I found on the Intex of Vision, at least from the emulation of it, were, are pretty solid. That's tight. I didn't trouble yeah, one. it's real tight. You've got four buttons there, you know. So you've got you can you've got uh, your uh, bomb and you've got your shoot. There's no problem there. Uh, and you uh, just fly now. Everything is super low red, so it's it basically there's a helicopter made of big dots flying through a canyon made of huge dots, and your enemies are made of smaller to larger dots. I mean that's basically long and <laughs> short of it. From the videos I, I saw, I thought this was emulation wise played on emulate. It looked okay. Yeah. Uh, the videos I saw of this looked like murderous eye pain. Yeah, because they're bright when there are so many of these red dots on the screen. Yeah. Uh, blurred, shaking. Uh, you want less red dots, not more red dots. And then the passageways on this game are incredibly tight. Incredibly tight, which makes it nigh unplayable in the actual system. It's very, it'd be very difficult to find that little screen. Oh my goodness. Or a little one. wobbly screen. I mean, some of the passageways are, are near pixel perfect. Yeah. I, I will say, I emulated this on, on the mega screen, you know, so I had tons of space there. Right. And uh, uh, I could see where emulating this, again, these are, these are going to be subjective looks, these games, because they're Playing them on the actual hardware is such an uh, incredibly rare occurrence. Right, you're well, not going to get. I mean, but could but could you play this, emulate it on your own for fun? Yes, you could. You, and it, I found that uh, uh, it is hard, uh, but it, uh, it is playable. Now, I'd say this is probably the hardest of the four games. This my was opinion. my least favorite. Yeah, I, with, I, this was my least favorite. But graphically, you got to admit it's probably the best looking, and it looks pretty close to the arcade. Uh, I, mean, I mean, as far as the intakes, uh, as far as get. red stretched pixels, I suppose it does. Oh man, you're 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 too hard on this one. <laughs> I should mention, by the way, these games were under twenty dollars when you bought them. Yes, the eighteen day. bucks. You could get so, them straight from the manufacturer for eighteen. They sold on the shelf for about fifteen. And I tried to find uh, uh, something to price these with on eBay, so I could say what you could get them for now. And none of these games no. were available. No. And no, I mean, none of the games, none of the boxes, nothing. I couldn't get. I couldn't find anything. No, and they hadn't been sold in recent in a recent memory. Outside of the mega bundle that we talked about earlier for the fifty five hundred dollars, yeah. I did not see the games for sale anywhere, and I looked. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're so these things are real. They're pro, they're probably more difficult to find in the system. So um, okay, let's let's rank these games. For me, this was the fourth best game for the system. Where would it rank for you? Um, 
it's funny because I was sure this would be my favorite, and it wasn't. Uh, so I would probably rank this one. I had to think about this. I would probably rank it third, third best. Okay. Out, out of four, uh, I, I thought this one was. I mean, again, this wasn't garbage. No. I didn't think any of these games were garbage, no. but I thought this one was it, was pretty good. It was unfortunately too hard to play. Yeah, I, I think they they should have allowed more wiggle room for what they were trying to sell. So let's try one of uh, the ones I picked for you. Which one would you like to go? And uh, like let's go ahead and do. Uh, I think turtles you got next on the list there. Okay, hold on a second. Let me decommission this. Now, uh, I will say turtles. It's funny. This is another game that came out for the Odyssey too. <laughs> yes. Now turtles. Uh, taking a quick look at it here. Arcade game, of course, uh, by Konami. Uh, <clears throat> the release date for turtles was eight was eighty one. And the release date for the Turtles on this system was 8283. It's kind of a gray line. History has seemed to have forgotten. <laughs> uh, Turtles, if you don't know, is a maze-based game where you are a mother turtle trying to rescue her baby turtle and get them back to home uh, while being attacked by giant beetles. And the way that you do this is you run into uh, what... This system calls uh, mystery squares to find your turtlets and bring them home. But watch out because of the eight mystery squares, two of them are going to have beetles, which will just add to the beetles that are already chasing you around the maze. Uh, this is a vertical game in the arcade and a horizontal game here on uh, the system, which is different, obviously. Uh, and it's not just like they turn the screen 90 degrees. Uh, it, the mazes are a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, I felt that this one had, with the exception of stage one music, had the best music. Yeah. Uh, it had, it had the music. most music because yeah. each stage up to the loop uh, has its own musical tune. It does. And it is, now it is just beeps and boops. Yeah. Uh, Pitched beeps and boops, uh, but it actually played songs that you would recognize. The clips for the songs are about 10 to 15 seconds long before they repeat, uh, but they were, you're, you're really not on the stage long enough for that to super matter. The worst part of it is anytime you interact with anything in the environment, which you're doing constantly, the song restarts. So to actually hear all the song, you almost have to just put yourself into a corner for a second and, and listen for it. Um, Turtles in the arcade, I love it. This is one of my go-to games when I'm just sitting around and I want to play something. Turtles on this, great. It was great. Absolutely great. I loved every minute I played it. This is definitely the game I played the most. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed the sound effects, although, like, when you go to a mystery square and you uncover a beetle, there's this big, loud, screechy noise, which is perfect. Uh, seeing this played on an actual system, the screen is static, and you move around the screen, which is exactly what this system needs. Uh, it has the maze. You can kind of almost block the maze out visually while you play, and just move your sprite around, and it I, for me it did the best. This is by far my number one game for the system. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna confess something right here on ARG presents. I have never I never played the arcade version of this. I have played the the uh, uh, the the Odyssey Two version, which I didn't understand. And so when I loaded this, when I saw this amongst the titles, I'm like, oh boy, holy cow! That's why I gave it to you. I was like, I ain't playing this. It's good crap. So I fired this thing up, and um, th this is the first time I've ever fully grasped the rules of Turtle. Again, not caring that much. And I can say without uh, a doubt that this, far and away, was the best game on the on the Intex Adventure Vision. Uh, in fact, this has made me a fan of Turtles. Uh, a fun game. Yes. Uh, and the system handles it brilliantly. Yes. Uh, everything is obvious you you've got the extra buttons to do your bomb and whatnot and you can you uh it, there are elements of uh, uh, again this is another game that have elements of like blueprint where you have to 
you go to a square, it reveals uh, your, the item you have to go get, and then you have to go get the item and take it back to the middle. I like that. Uh, it, it, it's, it's actually um, a multi a multi-faceted uh, mission. That you have to do. Yeah, you have to, you have to one, dis- go discover your thing, turtle, then it, go pick it up, and then go to your home with it. Yeah, and which, you, in you, the gotta go, you gotta go pick it up first, then you take yeah. it over there. Uh, uh, the uh, the thing, the turtle looks sort of like a turtle. The, yep. The beetles look sort of like bugs. Yep. Uh, the missions were clearly stated. You could understand exactly what you were doing. I knew right away. Again, I've never played this game that much, except on the on the O2, and I didn't understand what was going on. So to understand this game was pretty simple. It worked out great. The music was surprising to me. Uh, I found the controls uh, worked well. Tight, know? emulation and, wise, tight. Yeah, yeah, and it looked, it looked good. It wasn't again. I thought Super Cobra looked better, but it was not. It did not play better than this. I agree. And the and this, I agree with Brent on this. If uh, the uh, if the Intex Adventure Vision wanted to stay in its elements, it would have stayed with games similar to this. Yes. Uh, uh, because this was definitely this was head and shoulders. It was so much better. The than best the rest. game, yeah. and I trust me when I tell you, uh, I was as surprised as anyone. And I'm sure you're surprised <laughs> to hear me say this stuff because I've never been a big Turtles fan. I was surprised to say you've never played Turtles for the arcade before. It's funny that Turtles and Super Cobra both got released. And by the way, the Super Cobra on this is better than the one on the Odyssey too. I might add, uh, uh, because in terms of being close to the arcade, so Odyssey two couldn't pull it off. But Turtles is a game that's real simple to render, which yep. I'm guessing that's why it got a, a port over the Odyssey Two as well as the as well as the Intake Adventure. And it's funny that they're sort of they got that in common. They're you know, uh, but uh, Turtles the songs the song changing blew my mind. I was yeah. like, wow, this has got multiple tunes. Yeah, you know, and it's also got a cutscene uh, in there. You know, in that little part. After yeah, you, the climb the ladders. I mean, yeah. that's something. Yeah, that's no, you're something, right. You know, it is a cutscene. I liked it. So let me tell you something that's unique about Turtles. Well, somewhat unique. All right. Uh, Turtles had a a pack in afterthought message uh, that was included in every box for the game. All right. <clears throat> and it reads, When turning game on, it is something necessary to wait five to seven seconds for the screen to light up. If after a few tries, the display does not light up, Put in a fresh set of alkaline batteries. Yeah. So this was apparently... They all had that, didn't they? they did, no, they did oh, not. okay. Uh, this was apparently... Uh, I don't know if Turtles was just more power hungry or if it had more shoving into RAM or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that had a little pack-in message. So we both agree, number one, Turtles. Turtles was, was, number, was number one. Yeah, yeah I, I've got to agree with that one. So let's go ahead and move on to one of my uh, picks here. And so... Brent Shep was more than happy to stick Defender on me. Oh, yes. I'm not a big fan of Defender in the arcade, but let's, I know it's very popular, so let's talk about that. So Defender, of course, the uh, 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 big-time title from the Eugene Jarvis genius, you know, uh, so also did Robotron. Uh, this came out from the fellows over at Williams. Uh, they were uh, on fire yeah. there for a while. And uh, this, uh, <laughs> this game got released to everything. I mean everything. Apple II, Atari 2600, the 8 bits, 5200, the BBC Micro, ColecoVision, C64, Vic 20, and yeah. Television, which I didn't know the television got a port of that, did you? I, I didn't think about it. The <laughs> TI 99, the Sam Coupe, the Spectrum, everything yeah. got a port of this. Uh, this came out in the arcades way back in yeah. March of 1981. Doesn't seem like it was that long ago. That's amazing to me. Uh, and Defender was uh, a game. For people that thought, you know, joysticks and one button or no button, that's boring. We need 400 bu- a keyboard of buttons here that we have to hit like a, a you know a bongo player on on crack, you know. And that's exactly what Defender is. Defender, if you play the proper version, it's just buttons everywhere. And I remember playing this in the arcade the first time and just being like, "Are you kidding me? Looking at this, this at this panel, like you're talking intimidated," and then going in there and just sucking. Because it's a tough game, and I, I do. I will say, I found the home versions easier and more accessible, just because that they condense the controls down to where you can actually control the thing without hitting hit twenty right. buttons. You know, yes, it's a it's a difficult task. So, in Defender, you are a spaceship defending 
a, a planet from these aliens that are coming down, and they will come down and they will grab your humanoids off the off the uh, planet, and you got to shoot them in midair, mind you, and then zoom in and pick up that human as they free fall and then drop them. <laughs> Drop them back down on the planet, and if they if you let the humans get off, then they become mutants, and they're then they're after you. Right. So, uh, uh, and you can certainly defend. You can actually kill the aliens. The your human drops out, and then you miss him, and he just falls to his death. So, right. Uh, it's, a, it's a brutal game. It was a game that had, was that scrolled, uh, 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 you know, horizontally, and so you had a radar at the top that yeah. told you uh, what was going on, you know, uh, and. Um, it was a, it's a, like I said, it's a, I always thought, of, I found it a very difficult game. But I mean, it was cool looking and it was cool sounding. I mean, they cool guy this thing to the nines. The laser in it was cool. You remember yes, how that thing looked? Absolutely. Very and, stretched out and pixely. So I thought to myself, wow, they're going to attempt to do this on the Intex Adventure Vision? Yeah. And I will As say, a pack in? I will say that the, uh, the Adventure Vision was mostly up to the task, yeah. uh, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, I looked over the rules for this, and uh, most of the enemies, and maybe all the enemies are from the arcade are there. Uh, the uh, the uh, the scrolling is there. Yeah. The uh, picking up the humans is there. You know, the radar is there, e- uh, which is surprising. E- even <clears throat> uh, the, the hyperspeed. Yeah, it's got Which, it uses holy on. cow. Yeah, it, it, that's a boy. <laughs> what an effect. I'll tell you what, that's a battery sucker right there, surely. Uh the uh, uh it they, the one thing the Intex had that very few other systems had was four buttons. So yeah. they mapped the crap out of stuff these buttons, didn't they? And so you've got uh it's funny in, in some ways that uh, the Intex Adventure Vision version of Defender is controls more like the arcade than any of the other ones do. Yeah. In a weird way, which is bizarre. So it's there's an advantage there. Um, I found this to play okay. Yeah. I mean, I didn't see any problems with it. It When you run into problems, it's, just, it's, a, it's a tough game. The uh, The way it works is the radar up top of the screen will tell you when an alien is, where an alien's at and what they're doing. So you can see if they're if you saw an alien duck down into the planet and come back, you probably you're sure he's got a human, and you can run over there and get him, or you can just shoot up in the air. So the radar is vital, and they got the radar in here, yeah. and, it, and it works. Yeah. Um, I was now, but I mean, all that aside, all the game elements, I give them credit. Uh, it is sort of clunky uh, feeling. Uh, I mean, it plays okay, but I mean, you're playing this on an Intex Adventure Vision, and it's just weird. It's it's uh, it's uh, not attractive. Uh, the uh, the humans the uh, are little tiny specks. The uh, aliens are kind of larger specks. Your ship is made up of basically like a long line and a short line. Your the lasers aren't as cool looking. You know there are things you can't do that were in the arcade version of this. And so what you get here is a very remedial version of the arcade game. I'd agree with that. Now they stuck in all the elements they could to their credit, and as a packing game. I would be pretty happy with it. It's I mean, there's, re, there's replayability there. Of course, the sound not that good, uh, and the uh, um, you know. But I mean, it's got it. You know, it's the same exact game. You finish the level, you're done. You start the new level. Aliens appear. They get tougher. You know, uh, more different. You know, different types of aliens uh, come out there. And if you look at the docks, it's got all the point toes. There's a there's probably six or seven varieties of enemies that come out in this. So. Uh, a, a, a good attempt. I would put this one uh, second uh, to Turtles in terms of game playability and uh, and and closest to the arcade game. Uh, and I thought it was a, a noble effort. Is would would I play this one more than Turtles? No, no, no. But I would play it. And as far as Defender goes, a game which I'm not real fond of, I thought it was okay. What do you think? The technology of this. Uh, being able to shove all this into this package is is amazing. Four K. Yeah. Th- knowing that this is really just uh, forty LEDs spinning on a glass mirror is <laughs> mind blowing. <laughs> to put it like that, because the radar is is, is spot on. Um, if you knew the processor in this thing, it's literally just a math processor. It, I mean, it literally is just. Add one, subtract three type of processor. Yeah. It can't. That's all it does. Um, so being able to program all of these different elements that work in harmony is pretty amazing. The hyper spin, the, uh, the hyper jump uh, on the actual system 
it just takes all the 40 LEDs and just starts lighting them up. Yeah. So it just smears red and then comes back to where you're at. And then almost you, almost always you just instantly die. When, when that effect kicked in, I was thinking to myself, holy smokes. That's, yeah. That's, that gets your attention, man. It's it, pretty good. It's uh, it, it's impressive that they were able to do as much as they were, and I can completely understand why this was the packing game. Because if you're wanting to show off your system, this is how you do it. Um, however, they tried to shove in too many aliens, in my opinion. I don't think the aliens are varied enough to tell a difference. I think they should have just stuck with one or two, a big one and a small one, which basically they did. I mean, if there are other differences besides big one and small one, I don't know what they are. Um, humans are literally just a dot. Yeah. Uh, you so, can easily miss the humans. Yeah, they're yeah. so small that they're that they're almost always going to fall to the planet and die. Yeah. Well, you, however, get, you get lucky occasionally. Yeah. However... Um, I would say that this is number two of the best games on the uh, system. Yeah, I, I, the, uh, the one thing that I had trouble with was that, of course, you've got a, you don't have a large screen, and so you're whipping around there so quick, it's easy to miss stuff. That was, you know, what I'm saying, and uh, I had the same problem with our next game too. It's just, it's the you don't have a lot of real estate, and so it makes keeping it together now a little more difficult and, and the worst part of this is there's a lot of moving parts on the actual system so when you're seeing this on the actual system there's a lot of stuff moving and wiggling because of just the nature of the system <clears throat> but having the top be somewhat static and the bottom be somewhat static. i mean they all scroll so it's not like that but you don't have to pay attention to them so you can kind of focus in the middle Help this a lot, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I thought it was. A, I thought this was a, a surprisingly a much like. Well, and it wasn't as surprising as Turtles, but it was when I saw the fin there. I was like, "Holy smokes, this is going to be an absolute nightmare!" And it was. It was. It was not bad. So you want you want to tackle your last one there? Yeah, let's go ahead and throw it into the last one, which was <laughs> not asteroids, but asteroids. The official name was the uh, Space Force. Yeah. And Space Force, <laughs> it's asteroids. Let's just let's just call it what it is. This was a first party clone of asteroids, which is of course the Vectrix had the exact same. They that was their shipping game built in. Yes. So the, the, an asteroids clone. So this yeah. was this was par for the course. Yeah. They uh uh did pretty well with this. The sound effects are meh. Uh, there's not a ton of sound effects even to be had. Uh, you have your ship is spherical. Uh, it, it's not the the uh, trademark like arrow pointy ship that you get from the asteroids in the arcade. <clears throat> uh, however, being that it was a circle, when you rotate your gun around, uh, it is very easy to tell which way you're pointing. It shows which a is, little gun. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very impressive that they were able to pull that off. That, I never left. I was never to the point where I failed to aim at something because I didn't know where I was shooting. You know what it just reminded me of is one of the uh, ships out of Star Control Two. You know that they get spin around. You know, I personally yeah. now I will say uh, I think I like this ship. I, yeah. I like the concept of it, I, and I thought it was. I like that. I, I thought that was okay. Uh, no, I, yeah, I'm not yeah. down to yeah, that. I'm that, just that, saying that it's was different. that was my probably my favorite part of the game was the ship. Yeah. Uh, the asteroids look decent, uh, and when you shoot them, they have a chance of splitting into a smaller asteroid. Yeah. Um, Good chance. You have your aliens, and this is where they kind of mix it up. They have large aliens, which I believe I have the name of the aliens here because it's something funky. Uh. The large Zenak attack ship and the smaller Zarel attack ship okay. is what they're officially named uh, in the in the instruction manual. Mm. So uh, you have your your aliens that come, and when they come, they start shooting at you just like it would be on asteroids. And like I said, you have a larger and a smaller version. Uh, the only difference really is one's harder to hit. Uh, split your asteroids. It's asteroids. Uh, the problem, and much like asteroids, when I play asteroids, I sit in the middle and I just spin around and shoot things. Uh, only moving when I'm in complete danger. 
with this, if you move out of the center, that's it, game over. Yes. You, you There's so little real estate you, the problem. And you fly at the speed of light. <clears throat> yeah. So it is crazy uh, how fast you move in this game. I, if they would have slowed that down, it would have helped a ton. Uh, but if you move out of the middle, it's game over because you, you just instantly fly into something. What did you think about this? This is a solid <clears throat> three on my list just because the replayability of it is not that high. I put this one below, <clears throat> as the, my least favorite on the system. Uh, and and it, I like Super Cobra more than this one. But that said, uh, this one is... I agree with almost everything you said. The ship is better. I like the ship. Uh, the uh, asteroids, I mean, I'll give it credit, it does pull this off, sort of, but the screen, the real estate you have to play on is not huge, and it's difficult to drive your ship around. Yeah, uh, and, and it's impossible. And God it's forbid not difficult, you try it's to impossible. Hit it, uh, you know, teleport out of there or whatever, you're, you're boned. Uh, so, that alone takes it down a peg. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't think this was all that fun. You know, I mean, it's nowhere. It's not in the same ballpark as the clone of asteroids on the Vectrix. Oh, uh, it, it, well, yeah, it's not. I yeah. agree. I like that one a lot more. Uh, and you know, ve- and of course, everyone had asteroids or a clone. Some some versions of asteroids are better than others. Uh, uh, it probably is still better than the uh, eight bit Atari version of asteroids. On if you saw both, like they're horrible. So I mean, it's it's okay. Again, you've got the joystick with the extra button, so you got that going on. But I mean, I thought asteroids were one of those games that when they brought it home. Uh, just having the one button and the joystick actually worked pretty well for where you could still do all the moves in the arcade. Well, yeah, I just pulled and, down. But, I mean, the extra <clears> button <throat> on this is, uh, is I guess it's there. Let me tell you, just as, as Turtles had a little pack-in message, uh, so too does Space Force. Their pack-in message says, Oops, we goofed. Button 1 must be used. Button 1 must be used to set your game for two-player alternating play. Button 2 must be used to set your game for an individual player to play. So they kind of screwed that up when it... How does uh, that ship? I, <laughs> yeah. And it, plus, they had it right in the instruction booklet as well. Uh, when the game boots up, it asks you how many players you want to play. And if you hit... One, you get a two-player game, yeah. and which was very confusing. The last time, the first time I did it, I thought, well, I, just, I, I thought I got a ton of men. I just thought something. I messed up the the yeah. buttons. Uh, but yeah, that had a pack in, so I guess people would stop saying, "Why, well, why does it keep throwing two-player stuff?" Is Turtles and Space Force the only ones that had little notes in them? Yes, yes, that I could find. That's that's incredibly, it's incredibly wacky. So yeah. my final my final rundown on these, I would at number four, I would put. Uh, the asteroids clone there. Oh, you! Oh, I thought you said you put it at three. Uh, n- n- no, I put it at four. It's my least favorite. Okay. Number three, I would put Super Cobra, uh, two Defender, and one. And really, uh, a double as good as the next three would be Turtles. Amazing! I can't believe it. I have become a Turtles fan. Yeah, I can't I, believe it. I, I would put uh, uh, at number ten. Number I would ten. I would put Super Cobra nine. I would put uh, Space Force. Eight, I'd put Defender. That leaves enough room for you to understand how much Turtles is better than everything else on this system. I agree. You know what else is better than anything else? What's that? It's spinning the wheel. Ah, yeah, all it's right. Spinning the sucker. Tell them what you added this week. Uh, in, a, in a fit of desperation, what have you done? We added Chat Choice back to the wheel. And let me tell you something. If you go Chat Choice and Bizarro, we got a problem. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Oh, God, Brent. What a disaster. <laughs> Why did I let you be in charge of these pieces? Yeah, you're, you're a madman. All right, uh, what do we got do we there? Get there? There we go. And what your survey says? We got the Auric computer system. Oh, now we've been scared of this one for a while, haven't we? Yes. Brent? This is one of the... we Most of the time, we, whoops, ignore that. It's just a wheel careening to its death. <laughs> stop, stop laughing evilly. So, uh, we most of the time when we pick a system on here, we generally have an idea of what we're One doing. of us does. But I don't know anything about this. It's Zero. French or something in the brand. I don't even know I, exactly I, what it is. I think I just came across it when I was uh, looking up fun computer facts <laughs> one day. So I've heard it referenced, and I think some of the people in our uh, Amigos Discord have 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 mentioned it, but I, I you know, I guess we're going to learn, hey, I didn't have, I'd never heard of the Sam Koopa either. Now it's got to have one. So And you know what? Really, the uh, adventure... Uh, uh, vision here. Okay. I thought it was interesting tech. Yeah. I thought it had at least one good game. 
Um, I- I'm glad we went down this path. It's very interesting. Yeah. The fact that something that is so wacky can produce a game is baffling. It is. It's crazy and, time. And uh, kudos to the fellows who got games out of this thing. And yeah. one would wonder uh, how what they could have done going forward. Because I think there, no, I mean, I, I think there are <laughs> games to be had. Um, I think if they would have stuck more like to th- maze games, or even if they would have went a route of trying to put like a poker or something on this. I'm thinking something like a Wizard of War might do well yeah. in this, or a, uh, uh, yeah, you could do a card game or something, yeah. I think. I don't know. It depends on how what you could do with text or symbols on there, because you really are limited well, to what you've got. Well, here's the thing. Unless, unless those buttons are just hardwired together... Having eight buttons back there, you could do a lot of stuff with cards. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Or maybe I now I want to see a sports title in here of some sort. I'd probably a racing game would be what you could do. No, I think, I think could, that'd be a horrible idea. I think you could do a. I think you could do one. But uh, we're at all speculation because it is never going to happen. Well, that's a that's a challenge to all you uh, brilliant programmers out there. Of course, the problem with programming for this is no one will ever see your work. Yeah. And you'll never find a system or be able to afford a system to test out your own work. If you actually come across this video and you have an Intex Adventure Vision, uh, I would love to hear your comments on yes. the actual gameplay of these games down below. It'd be, it'd be awesome. Um, we should mention, because we never do, that uh, one, uh, this is, in fact, uh, not only a video show, we also have a podcast of the, uh, the, of the audio from this uh, presentation. If you're, if you're so inclined, and we're available on all your normal uh, avenues of getting podcasts. Yeah. Uh, we are uh, back next week with the Auric. Yes. Any final thoughts on that? Are you nervous about it? No, I, I mean, uh, this show always pushes me to learn new things about new systems that I didn't know about before, and often I find myself uh, uh, better for the ride. So right. let's just keep on going. You want to say hi to anybody in the chat room while we're here? Uh, we had a few people... T- Stop in. We had uh, Picard, Pixels. Uh, we had Amiga Bang. Stop by. Uh, Duncan Styles, of course, made an appearance. And I believe there was one more. Uh, sorry, I'm passing you up. We he had hates a, you. Oh, st- no, Steve. Steve stopped by as well. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we had a few, little bit of net hiccups. So if you are watching this on the stream, be sure to check us out Wednesday when we release officially. I uh, should mention that uh, there is a challenge going on right now. It's the Make Us Some Music uh, 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 Challenge. I need some. Uh, I need a, a closing tune, uh, so I'll stop being flagged for using uh, illegally using a copywritten material. That's it. So I would love to have someone that has some talent. Now, uh, last week I mentioned this and forgot to mention where you would send this. So, <laughs> well, can, and why would you need that information, you can Aaron? Send, you can send it your music to argpresents at mail dot com. Our usual, our usual uh, hangout. Uh, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can also send there, or you can link us up on uh, YouTube underneath the video. However, we're we're easy. Anyway, the winner of the uh, make us a decent tune uh, contest gets a, a, a treasured ARG fun pack. I will say, Boat, did you hear Boat's song for us? It's pretty good. He, but, he, he sang it live on the Amigos uh, Friday night. Ah. And it was, I mean, I mean, Boat's singing is questionable, but it was a pretty amusing tune set to a Ramones beat. I, I got a kick out of it, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll music that up and stick it in. There you go. So, until next week, when we have a look at the Adventure, vi- or <laughs> at the Auric. <laughs> we, done, we done did that one. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Adventure on. Have a good one.